You are here because the outside world rejects you. This is your family. All right, what's up, everyone? Today, we're going to break down the latest issue of the ongoing IDW Ninja Turtles comic issue 133. You can see here on the cover that this is a tie-in to the Ninja Turtles Armageddon game event, which has just kicked off with Armageddon game issue number one, which dropped a couple weeks ago. So yeah, here is the next installment in that story, as you can see here on the release schedule for the Armageddon game. So basically, what's happening here is that the events of the Armageddon game, which by itself is an eight-part event are bleeding over into the regular series which totally makes sense the armageddon game is an event taking place in the same continuity and so it looks like the ongoing series will give us some more info of what's going on in the overall picture and so when you look at it like this it's not just an eight part event this is like a 20 part event if you include everything else here on the release schedule so they weren't lying when they said this is going to be a massive turtle story now to have this make the most sense definitely go check out the armageddon game number one first i did a whole breakdown of that issue by the way i'll leave a card for it right here but yeah this takes place around that same time you can see similar events from the armageddon game number one playing out in the background here of this issue but anyways let's start off with the way this issue starts we get a very interesting dream or vision of the future by the character carmen a recent student of leonardo anyways in the dream we see carmen and leonardo in the future and the future looks post-apocalyptic judging by some stuff in the background we see leo saying bob please don't do this and we see the character of Bob holding what looks like a bomb or something in the old Archie comics which was a different continuity Leo had students named Carmen and Bob so I think that's what we're seeing here one of his eventual students that's about to do something drastic anyways Bob says I have to and it zooms out and it looks like they are at the entrance to a mouth of a giant mechanical shark or maybe it's just a machine with blades but it looks an awful lot like a shark Leo tells Carmen to go and we see Leo just leap in into the mouth of this machine. But that's where the dream ends and Carmen wakes up in the Turtles' home. We see the Triceraton girl, Sari, was watching her sleep and gets scared when Carmen wakes up and runs to Donatello, who if you remember from the Armageddon game number one, is staying back there in the Turtles' home due to his familiarity with the coordinates there. He is to teleport Leonardo, Mikey, and Shredder back from Dimension X when they're done recruiting the Nova Posse. So yeah, we have Donatello hanging out here and we get some moments here of him introducing April and Carmen to Sari, pretty much explaining her whole situation, how she escaped the island where the evil Utram Chirel was trying to kill her. And they kind of discuss Chirel a little bit more here in a way that I believe is setting him up as a future big bad in the comics, or maybe just here in the Armageddon game. Maybe he does something in this event. I think either way would be pretty cool. He's definitely big bad material. But yeah, we don't get really anything else in this scene. It's just everybody getting introduced to each other. We do see Siri say she wants to get vengeance on Chirel right now now for everything he's done but Donatello says one thing at a time that they'll have to wait but that he promises that she'll get her chance we'll see what comes out out of that Now, another interesting thing we see in issue 133 is what Venus is up to. They've only showed her a few times so far in these comics, so I'm very curious to see what they end up doing with the character once she's fully involved. The story takes us over to the Foot Clan headquarters, which is now run by Karai, by the way, who for the Armageddon game has teamed up with the Turtles and the Shredder. Anyways, we see Bludgeon, a mutant hammerhead shark who is in the Foot Clan, but he seems to be going down into the lower levels of the headquarters looking for someone. We see then that Venus is here hiding out. In earlier issues, we saw that Bludgeon took Venus in since they both have mystical abilities, although he says his powers are nowhere near the level of Venus's power. He asks how Venus is doing, and she says she can't clear her head. For those who don't know, her memory is kind of scrambled. This version of Venus has a pretty messed up origin. She was physically taken apart and put back together and turned into a turtle by Dr. Barlow. So it makes sense that her mind is not quite right yet. Anyway, as Bludgeon is trying to help her with meditation, and during this session, something happens. Venus starts thinking about her past, trying to unlock old memories when all of a sudden, one of her missing arms begins to grow back. They begin to think that her focusing on her lost memories is helping her heal, so they continue to meditate. Here we see Donatello pick up her presence in the astral plane, and he tries to communicate with her. You see, the two have met before when they were both captured by Dr. Barlow. He asks her where she is, but she says she cannot tell him yet, and then the channel is broken and she goes away. Now, one thing Bludgeon mentions in this whole sequence 
is that he doesn't know how long he can keep her presence here at the Foot Clan headquarters a secret, that they're gonna have to find a new location, so it's gonna be interesting to see where they end up, and also if she's gonna team up with the rest of the turtles. All right, next, let's talk about what's happening over in Mutant Town at the City Hall. Here, Jenica, the ex-Foot Clan member turned fifth Ninja Turtle, is becoming the constable of Mutant Town since Raphael has left on a mission to look for old Hob. Now, we see Jenica on patrol here, and all the while, we're getting a voiceover of Mona Lisa, who's doing a radio show, announcing Jenica as the new constable. You see that some people are taking it well, but others are not. You hear someone say, how about less people patrolling us, and Jenica overhears this. Now, this is all going on just as Baxter Stockman begins his address to the city that we saw him do in the Armageddon game number one. All of Mutant Town is watching the broadcast. Now, just like we saw in the Armageddon game number one, Baxter tells the human part of the city that although they cannot be sure if their mutated neighbors, the citizens of Mutant Town, can be trusted, that everyone can rest assured that Baxter will keep everyone in the human part of the city safe from any harm that will come. And just like how we saw in the Armageddon game number one, this is when the turtle clones attack the crowd of people that are there listening to Baxter. And it's kind of cool because we see it from a different perspective here in this issue. This attack from the Ninja Turtle clones is being broadcast all over the city and you see everyone freaking out. Donatello is watching from his location and he cannot believe what he's seeing. All of this causes Mutant Town to destabilize. We see a lot of the people actually thinking that it's the Ninja Turtles that are attacking Stockman. And some of them start to cheer it on. Others start freaking out saying that they're never going to be allowed to leave Mutant Town because of this. Everything starts to break out into pandemonium and Jenica starts getting stuff thrown at her. It's pretty wild. She needs backup so Donatello calls their friend Angel. Once Angel gets the call, she starts to put on her exosuit when all of a sudden an alarm starts going off at the lab she's at. The alarm indicates that an incoming gravitational energy surge is approaching and you hear it getting closer and closer and then boom, something bursts into the lab causing an explosion. We see who it is and they say we mean you no harm, but she doesn't believe them and so she blasts at them and hits one. This is when one of them blasts back and this knocks out Angel. And then we get a really good look at who it is. It's a group of what looks like five mutants and by the looks of things there's a fox, a gorilla, the leader which looks like a dog, and then one that looks like a cat and this one that looks like a hedgehog or something. The leader or the dog has glowing red eyes which looks pretty cool. We see him say immediate threat is neutralized talking about Angel. Then he says spread out, search and destroy and we see that they're looking at a hologram at what looks like the Triceraton Seri that is currently with Donatello that we spoke about at the beginning of the issue. Now I don't know who these guys are but if I had to guess judging on by who they're looking for it has to be something to do with Chirel, the evil Utrom. We'll have to wait and see what happens here but yeah this is where the issue ends. Overall I think this issue did a pretty good job of giving us different points of views from the events of the Armageddon game number one. I feel like it also does a good job of fleshing out some other things I've been excited to see, like what is Venus up to? I think she's going to play a major part in this story arc. She seems to have been made in a similar fashion as the Turtle clones. We saw her even in the free comic book day issue that came out earlier this year, watching the Turtle clones. I wonder if she used to patrol and fight together with them before. I think it's going to be awesome when they meet up again. The whole Turtle clone thing in general, at least for me, is pretty exciting. There's literally like 10 Ninja Turtles at the moment. There's the four clone turtles, the four original turtles, there's Venus, Jenica, and there's also the little pink one, Lita, who also has a future version of herself that has visited before, kind of like a future Trunks thing. So yeah, I expect a big turtle clash at some point for sure. But yeah, let me know what you think down below in the comments. The next installment in this story will be the Armageddon game, issue number two, which I believe as of right now is scheduled to come out October 26th. So make sure to get to your local comic book shop and pick that up so you can follow along as we do the reviews and breakdowns. But that's it for this one. Thank you everybody for watching follow on all the socials links are down below in the description and i will see you guys in a little bit with another video take care